Hi, and welcome to the Building Strong Relationships webinar. If you don't know me, I'm Nancy Picard, and I'm a Master Integrative Life Coach. My passion is helping clients uncover disempowering beliefs formed early in their lives that hold them back from living the biggest, juiciest life they can. This webinar is just one more way I can help you improve the quality of your day-to-day -day life. And my aim is for you to live the three B's, bigger, better, braver. I'm motivated to help you each achieve a better relationship and to improve your own health and well-being. If you have any questions during our time together, please feel free to post in the chat or email me at nancy at nancypicardlifecoach.com. So let's start by taking a different look at different relationships. The term interpersonal relationships refers to a created bond between two or more people. And to dive a little bit deeper, it's a close association between individuals sharing common interests and goals. And we can break down interpersonal relationships into different categories, familial, friendship, professional, and romantic. And different forms of relationships can develop under each category. However, there are a number of musts for an interpersonal relationship to form. In order to develop an interpersonal relationship, the following must be met. Individuals must share common goals or objectives with similar interests. Individuals must respect each other's views and opinions. There must be some form of attachment. Trust and honesty play a pivotal role. And so let's look now at each category and which and what differentiates them and how they serve to meet our needs. So the familial relationships are the first type of interpersonal bond we form beginning in infancy. Family plays an important role in protecting children and meeting their physical needs for survival while also providing emotional support and education. And there are many different roles within the family category of relationships, including mother, father, sibling, grandparent, aunt, uncle, and cousin. Biological kinship and cultural norms define those roles and the nature of each relationship. Familial relationships are the only category of interpersonal relationships which are involuntary. We don't choose the family we're brought up with. Over the course of our lifetime, our role within a family may evolve. We begin being completely dependent on caregivers. However, as we age, our categories may become more dependent upon children for survival. In many cases, the child can, can increasingly provide emotional and physical support for, the for their caretakers. I am probably not alone when I say that I am helping my children and my grandchildren and my parents all at the same time offering as much support as possible with my aging parents at the end of their lives. Friendships can be equal or even greater levels of intimacy than familiar because friendships are voluntary, unlike familial relationships. Friendship attachments typically form through shared interests, experiences, and attitudes. And there are many types of friendships we experience throughout life. For today's class, we're gonna focus on the most meaningful type referred to as true friendship. True friendship can be defined as those who provide emotional support. A true friendship will remain during good and bad times without exceptions. And this doesn't mean that there won't be quarrels within relationships. It's just one that will survive disagreements. Friendships are a two-way street and at the very core of every true friendship is trust. Friends are important to help us challenge ourselves, support us, and enable us to grow and vice versa. My life would not be the same without my many true friendships. I honor and support my friends and they do the same for me. The people we work with make all the difference in loving or hating a job. Relationship development among colleagues is important. After all, we may be spending 40 plus hours a week with our coworkers. Professional relationships arise out of circumstance. Beyond working for the same organization, you may have very little interaction with them. 
there are various types of professional relationships, many of which don't go beyond acquaintances. A team member may be a coworker who work closely with regularly, making them slightly more than an acquaintance, but not necessarily someone you'd call a friend. And a work friend is someone you have a personal connection with, someone you might want to have lunch with, sit by in meetings, or attend events with outside of work. Work friends fill our social need and help us stay sane during long, grueling hours. Work friends serve as our support system during the corporate hours. Romantic relationships are often the most emotionally and physically intimate among the different relationship categories. Romantic relationships are formed through a deep attachment, passion, trust, and respect. There's usually a mutually strong attraction to both personality and physical attributes. Romantic relationships are the closest form of a voluntary relationship. And this will lead to a secure connection or bond between two people not shared with anyone else. Romantic relationships meet our need for companionship, belonging, affection, emotional support, and validation. And romantic relationships can be short-lived or develop into a lifelong alliance. Research has shown that individuals with supportive and rewarding relationships have better mental health, higher levels of subjective well-being, and lower rates of morbidity and mortality. Relationships are important for supporting individuals and their ability to cope with stress or adversity. And additionally, a strong relationship helps a person learn, grow, explore, achieve goals, cultivate new talents, and find purpose and meaning in life. Five components of well-being have been identified and linked with meaningful relationships. And these components are happiness and life satisfaction, having purpose, positive self-regard, positive interpersonal expectancies, healthy weight and activity levels. Interesting, meaningful relationships are inherently connected to our mental and physical health and well-being. Researchers have found it's important to experience a variety of relationships. And we are most likely to thrive with well-functioning close relationships that serve different support functions within the categories that we've discussed. Relationships act to serve various functions between individuals. So here are two of them. The first important function of relationships is to support thriving through adversity, not only by buffering individuals from negative effects of stress, but also by enabling them to flourish either because of or in spite of their circumstances. Thriving through adversity teaches us to appreciate what we have. Adversity is a good reminder that some discomforts in life are only temporary. They act to teach us that our reactions to a situation count more than the situation itself. And relationships can help us develop this important skill. And the second important function of relationships is to support thriving in the absence of adversity by promoting full participation and life opportunities for their exploration, growth, and personal achievement. Personal growth is extremely important. It allows us to transform and continu continually work towards becoming the very best versions of ourselves. During life, we experience many phases, and no two phases look alike in any two people's lives. Relationships help facilitate growth by supporting one's journey and sometimes teaching things that have been learned along the way on their individual journey. Our extent of relationships has changed drastically over recent years. Technology has provided a limitless boundary for which we can now develop relationships among nearly anyone on the planet. Technology has both opened many doors for new relationships as well as stunted the growth of some relationships. We have 24-hour limited access to communication, but are we communicating? We talk in shorthand without expressing genuine emotions, we may communicate to someone that we are, quote unquote, laughing out loud, but we're missing out on the experience of actually laughing together. And as a result, there are some skills we have lost or are in the process of failing. And it's natural for relationships to change and evolve, but it's essential to make true connections along the way. 
So let's look at a tool that we can utilize to help build stronger relationships. There are some tools at your disposal for developing and maintaining healthy relationships, and I'm going to discuss each of them in more detail. Positive thinking, show that you care, be considerate, be an active listener, self-awareness, settle disputes, be a great communicator, be the kind of friend you want to have, Put yourself in other's shoes and don't keep score. So while it's not realistic to expect to be happy all the time, building strong relationships requires positivity to thrive. It's easy to pull others down with you when you're having a bad day, but too many days like this will cause others to go searching for those with a more cheerful outlook. This goes for any type of relationship you're trying to cultivate or strengthen. So having a positive disposition is welcoming and inviting, and others will be attracted to your positive force. So if you need a boost in positivity, here are a few tricks. Look for the optimistic view, even in negative situations. There's always a lesson to be learned. I say look through the lens of looking for what's right instead of the lens of looking for what's wrong. So try to wear the positive glasses instead of the negative glasses. And who you spend time with will have a huge effect on your outlook. So evaluate relationships. How do you feel after spending time with different people? And if you find yourself feeling down, negative, or drained frequently by the same relationship, consider it maybe time to take a step back. Keep things in perspective. When feeling stressed, it's easy to make a mountain out of a mohill. So try to remain calm so you can remain objective. Try to be the observer instead of the reactor. And keep in mind what you put out, you usually get back. If your energy is negative and frustrated, that may be ref reflected in your reactions with others. When you're experiencing negative emotions, instead of taking them out on others, refocus your attention. Try lending a helping hand to someone in need. Even smiling through tough situations can help you remain positive. And it's easy to take relationships for granted. Whether it's a close friend, a coworker, or a romantic partner, showing you care is a surefire way to strengthen your relationship. Everyone likes to feel appreciated. So don't be stingy with giving thanks, no matter how small. If someone did something you appreciate, let them know. And this will make both parties feel valued. Identify at least one attribute you really value in each other and the people that you have relationships with, and let them know about it. By showing others how much you care about them, you'll encourage them to do the same in return. And you don't have to do this all in one day, but it's a great way to try, and it's a good thing to try right after this webinar. Take note of what's happening in the lives of those that matter to you. You can strengthen any relationship by joining in on their happiness of a special occasion or offering genuine compassion when they face any personal tragedy. A Huffington Post article noted seven habits of considerate people. One I already mentioned was smile often. Choosing to smile, especially through tough times, makes a significant impact how others perceive you as well as boosting your own mood. Next is practicing empathy. Having compassion for others drives and strengthens connectedness. So try to be intuitive of other people's needs. This one can take practice if it doesn't come naturally. Simply consider others around you and how they're feeling and choose to act on that information. And manners can get lost, especially when we spend a lot of time with a particular person. However, it makes the need for manners no less important. Being polite is more than remembering to say please and thank you. It also involves understanding and acknowledging others' feelings. And finally, apologize when you're in the wrong or cause someone to feel poorly. Everyone makes mistakes, so own up to yours by apologizing. 
Active listening has become a lost art. Active listening involves both hearing and recognizing another's perspective. Too often, we're too quick to get our point across. We don't take the time to understand what someone else is saying. How well you listen to people impacts the quality of your relationships with them. And if you find it difficult to concentrate on what something someone is saying, try mentally repeating their words to reinforce the message. Active listening techniques include paying attention, giving the speaker your undivided attention, show that you're listening through acknowledgement and body language, reflect on what you're hearing by paraphrasing or asking clarifying questions, and avoid interrupting. No one likes to be interrupted, and this can frustrate the person speaking and distort their message. And make sure to respond with respect and understanding. Research shows that when we see ourselves clearly, we can build stronger relationships and communicate more effectively. Self-awareness involves having a clear perception of strengths, weaknesses, thoughts, beliefs, motivation, and emotions. Cultivating a strong sense of self-awareness allows you to understand others as well as how they perceive you. And there are some techniques you can utilize to develop and deepen your self-awareness. So look at yourself objectively by identifying and writing out current perceptions. Jot down your accomplishments, things that made you happy during childhood, and things that you feel you can improve upon. And keep a journal is a great way to develop self-awareness so you can write more about your values and things that are important to you. And it's really beneficial to periodically refer back to them and then add notes as things change and then make a note of why they've changed. Meditation or mindfulness can help you identify the thoughts running on autopilot in the background as well. You can also ask trusted friends to describe you and provide them with a safe place to provide honest feedback. And then you can do the same for your coworkers as well. Conflict is a normal part of having a relationship. Knowing how to respectfully settle disputes can build strong relationships. So here are some tips for managing resolving conflict in a healthy way. Address situations as they occur. Don't avoid conflict. If you can't let something go, it should be addressed quickly before developing into a larger issue. And remember the relationship is more important than winning an argument. So try to be respectful of others' viewpoints. Let go of past hurts and resentments and focus on the present dispute. Pick your battles because conflict can be draining. It's so important to consider whether the issue is worthy of your time and energy. And be willing to forgive and know when to let something go. Communication is key to connecting with others. It's a common myth that just because you talk with someone means you're communicating with them. Communication is much more than talking. It's about connecting by using your verbal, written, and physical skills to fulfill the needs of any given relationship. And many of the techniques we've already discussed go hand in hand with improving communication. In order to be a better communicator, you need to stop and listen. So actively listen and forget about all the thoughts swirling that you want to say. Active listening to what the person has to say. Try repeating what they've just said to make sure you understand it. And be open and honest. Hiding or holding back emotions tends to lead to bigger issues. If you're feeling hurt, say so. If you don't communicate what you're feeling, the other person may never know. So being open also means opening yourself up to the possibility of being hurt or disappointed. And when you do talk to somebody, nobody can make you feel hurt. You, you allow yourself to be hurt. So I feel hurt when something happens is a better way to communicate it than saying you hurt me when. Pay attention to nonverbal signals. Communication isn't necessarily about what is said, but how something is said. And try to focus on current issues and avoid taking cheap shots or rehashing things from past arguments. 
communication is really about listening and responding in a meaningful way. And it's important to give back to others what you expect from them. To build a healthy relationship, think about the qualities you expect in others. Well, do you exhibit and offer those same qualities? If you expect a colleague to be respectful of your opinions, even when they're different, do you respond to them with the same level of respect? Maybe you expect a close friend to be a shoulder to cry on when things are difficult. Do you show up for them in the same way? No matter what the relationships are, it's important to examine your expectations and make sure that they are realistic by living up to the very same expectations. And I like to say, be the relationship you want to have. So if you want a more open, honest communication with somebody, then you start with more open, honest communication. If you want to see your children and be closer with them, pick up the phone and make it happen. Part of the problem is we often wait for somebody else to make the moves. So just be the relationship you want to have. Empathy can be a tough one. Having empathy for someone is one thing. However, it's important to actually put it into action. When building a strong relationship, it's important to actively choose to view the world beyond yourself, to once again, this is made possible through communication and active listening. Be understanding. Acknowledge that there might be something going on than what you're seeing. How many times have you walked into a situation still reeling from another situation? Remember someone else's bad day may have started hours before. So show compassion when someone is acting out of character. Be accepting and realize that we all make mistakes. And bottom line, we all have obstacles to overcome. I'm reminded of this quote, be kind, for everyone you meet is fighting a battle you know nothing about. Relationships aren't about tit for tat or keeping score. It's common to tally up all the ways you give in a relationship and the other person doesn't. However, noticing you're doing this versus holding on to it is the difference between moving on and resentment. Keeping score is me-centered, meaning you elevate your role in the relationship to a place of superiority. Thinking in terms of not enough is a one-way ticket to viewing your relationship through the glass of half-empty lens. So instead of keeping store, score, give for the joy of giving and give back because you seek you, you give because you see a task needing to be done, not because there are strings attached, because then you're no longer unconditionally giving. So remember, true giving asks nothing in return. Well, that was a lot of information. So I just really quickly want to review everything we just talked about. Interpersonal relationships are made up of all types of interactions and connections from family, friends, professional colleagues, and romantic relationships. And meaningful relationships are key aspects of mental and physical health. And without them, we don't fare well. So here are the tools at your disposal. Being a positive force showing that you care, being considerate, being an active listener, exhibiting self-awareness, settling disputes fairly, being a great communicator, being the kind of friend you want to have, putting yourself in others' shoes, and giving without expectations. So keep those in your back pocket, and I guarantee you, each of you, your relationships will flourish. Here are some great references I compiled for you when I was doing this course. So feel free to take a screenshot of this so you can refer to it further and you can look up any of these topics for more information. I wanna thank you for taking the time to experience my class. I hope each of you learned at least one new technique for strengthening your relationships. I love helping people develop strong and meaningful relationships with each other. And if all else fails, keep this mind by Bernard Shaw in your mind. The single biggest problem in communication 
is the illusion that it's taken place. So if you have any further questions, please post them or email me. I've had a great time today and I'm always here to support you. Coaching is the best way to make real change in your life. And of all the things successful people do, working with a coach is the top of the list. I help my clients clarify their goals, work through their fears and disempowering beliefs, set realistic and achievable action steps, and help them live and maintain the values they set for themselves. I, will be a, I could be your accountability partner and help you stay focused on the path to your dreams. So a special offer that I offer at the end of my webinars is for watching, for watching this webinar is one discovery call and two one-on-one -on -one private coaching sessions, all for the price of one. All you have to do is go to my website and sign up for a session and cite the name of this webinar for your appointment. And I really look forward to working with you. This is a gift you can give yourself. Here is all my contact information. And again, you can reach me through any of these links and you can take a um, photo of this as well. So I know you have a busy life and it means a lot to me that you took the time to watch this webinar. And I send you my heartfelt gratitude. So thank you, thank you. And I say goodbye in light and peace.